Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Middle Bay Technologies. Today we will be looking at how we can authenticate a Kubernetes dashboard with Keyclock OIDC. Okay, so let's get started. I'm working on a Fedora workstation uh, 35 uh, with Kubernetes cluster 1.223.1 and uh, in my setup like I have one master and one worker node. So this video is actually a continuation to my last video wherein we have set up our Kubernetes cluster with Keyclock YDC authenticator uh, but in that like we try to configure our kubectl configuration uh, with manually with the Keyclock uh, OIDC provider details so that uh, whatever API request that we are going to send via the kubectl uh, to the API server uh, it gets authenticated by the API server uh, with the authorization token that we are going with the authorization to token that we are passing in the kubectl request okay so uh, you can go through uh, that video wherein we have set up the keyclock server uh, we have configured the api server and we have seen how we can use the kubectl to authenticate our api request uh, with the api server so let us see like the procedure which we will be following over here to get our Kubernetes dashboard authenticated authenticated with the Keyclock OIDC provider. Okay, so these are the high level steps that we are going to carry out in this video. I am going to explain uh, these in detail. So this is a high level procedure that we are going to follow. So let us see like each step in detail. Okay. The first and foremost thing is uh, once we have the Kubernetes cluster up and running, we need to have the Kubernetes dashboard application installed on our server. So this Kubernetes dashboard YAML definition, we can get it directly from the Kubernetes documentation. So you can go, uh, go there and download the yaml definition and install the kubernetes dashboard so nothing to change with that yaml definition so this is our kubernetes cluster and we are going to install the kubernetes dashboard onto that cluster the next thing that we need uh, for this setup is the ingress controller okay so here we are going to use the nginx uh, ingress controller this one we can get it from the nginx uh, ingress uh, documentation pages so once we have uh, once you have the yaml definition for that uh, nginx uh, ingress controller you can deploy it or to your cluster okay so the basic purpose of the nginx is to route the http or https request based on the context or based on the host to the respective backend services in the Kubernetes cluster okay so this is a high level uh, diagram of the request flow so once a client requests a particular context it goes to the ingress controller wherein uh, definition files are provided which define which context or which host need to route to a particular service in the backend which is running on the Kubernetes cluster and that service uh, again in the backend is going to route your request to the uh, specific pods uh, which it is currently managing okay so that is the whole purpose of nginx ingress controller let us move on so uh, with our last uh, diagram uh, like we are going to modify our service one of our service so we are going to deploy the over two proxy service that is service one in our last slide okay so as you can see this is over two proxy service which we have deployed right now so basically the purpose of over two proxy service is whenever a request comes in uh, to the over two proxy service it is going to uh, intercept that request and try to see if that request is authenticated by checking whether the request has any kind of JWT token or authorization bearer token within it. Okay, 
so if there is no authorization bearer token or jwt token available in the request it is going to reroute or redirect the request to the key cloud identity provider or whatever identity provider has been configured in the oauth 2 service okay so there it is going to route it to the key clock identity provider and our request is going to be authenticated with the key clock oidc which will send us the three tokens that is id token access token and request token okay so these tokens are going to be again sent back to the client so that is the whole purpose of what to proxy in this okay so as you can see from the uh, high level flow diagram the request goes to the ingress controller and based on the context and in this case it it will be slash or two so if it finds a request with slash or two context it is going to route it to the or two proxy service and from or two proxy service it is going to the backend or two proxy uh, pod which is running in the Kubernetes cluster okay so let us move on like to see what we need next for the setup okay so uh, as you can see uh, we need to have ingress resources okay so just installing the ingress controller is not going to help us okay so ingress controller is a kind of uh, nginx server which is running in, in our cluster okay so it accepts http and https requests but which request needs to be routed to which resources so how we are going to define that one so these two uh, services which are going to serve our request are going to be uh, need to be defined in the ingress server some way okay so th that is where the ingress resources come into picture so we have the ingress resources wherein we define the context path and the backend service to which we need to route the request okay so based on that the ingress server or the nginx server is going to route the request to the respective backend services which are running in the cluster okay so now you can see like i have changed the service one to over to proxy and here the service two to the Kubernetes dashboard okay so we are having two services right now which are defined in the ingress resources um, basically we have two ingress resources one is for the over to proxy and one is for the kubernetes dashboard services so we will see those details in the practice access coming forward so now like uh, if we look at the picture of our Kubernetes cluster, we will be having uh, once we apply the over to proxy service and the ingress resources. These are the four components that we are going to have in our cluster. First thing is we have deployed the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay. Next thing is we have deployed the ingress controller. The third one uh, is going to be over to proxy service that we are going to deploy and then we are going to deploy the ingress resources which define the context uh, and the backend services where the request needs to be routed uh, in our case it is going to be the Kubernetes dashboard and the over to proxy okay so this will be the high level uh, picture of our Kubernetes cluster with all the required uh, resources deployed So now uh, once we have all the services up and running the kubernetes dashboard and the oga2 proxy service and the ingress uh, ingress controller we can validate our request uh, like we can validate our access to the kubernetes cluster uh, using the keyclock oidc that we will be seeing in this video so let us get into our practical exercise so let me uh, log in into my Kubernetes cluster first. Okay, 
so i have started my kubernetes cluster which is one master and one micro node let me log into my master server okay so i am on my master node let me check my node status so both are in ready status so we have our kubernetes cluster ready with us okay so let me go into uh, my keyclock service and start it so let me check my logs for the keyclock service it is yet to load let us give it some time let's let us check and the logs again okay so you can see like uh, the kick log service 16.1 has been started so let us try to access our service So I have set up my Keyclock service uh, with the default uh, user ID and password. So I'm going to log in with that one. Okay, so we have our Keyclock service up and running with the client registered, like which is Gatekeeper, and uh, we have a static user created, which is Alice. Okay, so you can follow my uh, uh, last video as I said, like uh, we have set up my Keyclock service with the client service client uh, application registered and the user id uh, static user with it with that we have created okay so once we have the key clock service up and running the next thing uh, that we need to verify is our cube api server okay so let me show you my key clock uh, cube api server So uh, my Keyclock, uh, my Kubernetes API server is configured with the following arguments for the OIDC, like Keyclock OIDC provider. Okay. So this is this configuration is also uh, shown in my last video, so that you can you can follow uh, to configure the Kubernetes uh, API server so that it can authenticate the request with the Keyclock server. So now we have seen uh, like we have our service that is key clock service up and running and uh, on the other side like we have the API server has been configured with the OIDC server uh, OIDC provider details okay so the next two things uh, that we need is we need to first deploy the Kubernetes dashboard okay so as I said the Kubernetes dashboard you can get it from the Kubernetes documentation. So once you search for the Kubernetes dashboard install, like you can go into this page of uh, Kubernetes dashboard, wherein you will get this YAML definition, the recommended YAML definition. that you can install okay so this is how you can get the Kubernetes dashboard installed onto your system okay and uh, let me show you my Kubernetes dashboard so Kubernetes dashboard gets installed in a separate namespace that is Kubernetes dashboard so as you can see like there is a dashboard matrix and dashboard uh, that gets installed 
uh, for now let us ignore this one and there is a service for dashboard and dashboard metrics and deployment for dashboard metrics and dashboard and there is a replica set for those two applications okay and uh, one more thing uh, that we yeah so those are the things that gets deployed uh, once we apply that Kubernetes dashboard YAML definition for it. Okay. The next thing that we need to have is the Nginx ingress controller. So Nginx ingress controller YAML definition file also you can get it from the documentation. let us search for documentation uh, and, and it will straight away go uh, take us to that page okay, it looks like we are on to the nginx documentation uh, let us try to search for kubernetes nginx ingress controller So this one uh, will take you to the YAML definition file. This one with the YAML definition, as you can see. So this is the YAML definition file that you can install for setting up the ingress controller. Okay. So once we have the ingress controller now the remaining two things that we need to uh, deploy into our Kubernetes cluster is one is the OAuth 2 service and the other one is the ingress resources okay so let us try to see the YAML definitions files for those two services So this is my OR2 service which I am going to deploy uh, as a part of this setup. So as you can see, uh, this OR2 service uses the following uh, image that is OR2 proxy. Okay, and these are the parameters or arguments that I am going to pass as a part of. Uh, the OAuth 2 service like while running the OAuth 2 service okay so as you can see like we have configured the OAuth 2 proxy service with the OIDC proxy uh, OIDC issuer URL and the client ID client secret uh, and with others uh, upstream server details okay so these are some of the important parameters that you're going to that uh, you need to pass and also like we have uh, set up a few parameters related to the claim like uh, the the uh, uh, token that we are going to authenticate with okay so we are going to uh, uh, we have set up the parameters like over to proxy oidc email id uh, group claim allowed groups and uh, set authorization editor okay so this basically uh, uh, this parameter basically what it does is it is going to uh, like include the authorization header as a part of request while sending it back to the client okay so these are some of the parameters that we have set as a part of this service you can go to the documentation of the over 2 proxy so if you go into the over 2 proxy search for over 2 proxy and go into the documentation and you can get the over 2 proxy configuration uh, you can get uh, all the con uh, para arguments that you can set up over here their explanation okay so this is my over to proxy uh, uh, deployment that I am going to deploy and I am going to expose this as a service on port 4180 okay so this is my first service that uh, I am going to deploy the other one that we are going to apply is the ingress resources okay so let us try to see the ingress resources so let me just show you the 
two increase resources that we are going to deploy the first one is with the context slash that is going to uh, send the request to the kubernetes dashboard okay and the other ingress resource is this one wherein uh, any request with over to context is going to be sent to the over to proxy service okay so now like how exactly uh, the ingress is going to be here okay so here like uh, if you see like we have two main or uh, two important annotations uh, uh, placed in our first ingress resource so this is basically uh, going to tell this ingress resource to send the request uh, to the authentic uh, the or to proxy service on the following url to get the uh, authentication tokens okay so this endpoint uh, or this ingress resource is going to automatically send the request to the second ingress without any annotations okay so without any annotations and it is going to send it to the backend over to proxy service from where it will authenticate uh, the user with the key clock oidc uh, provider and get the authentication tokens okay so once we have the uh, authentication tokens like id id token it is going to send back that uh, authentication tokens which we are going to place as a part of request in uh, in the our uh, in the upcoming requests uh, requests that we are going to send it to the upstream server okay so upstream server in our case is kubernetes dashboard okay so these are the uh, annotations that we need to place and https annotation is basically for uh, secure communication to happen between uh, ingress and the service okay so these four uh, uh, four uh, annotations are required so that your uh, requests are routed appropriately and all the uh, appropriate headers are set okay so this is the ingress resource that we are going to apply so I have already applied them into the Kubernetes dashboard namespace. So let me show you. So as you can see, we have applied our over to proxy uh, deployment and servers. Uh, so basically, this is the pod that is running our over to proxy and the service that is uh, exposing our over to proxy. So this is a deployment of the over to proxy and the replica set okay and let us check the ingress also so as you can see like we have two ingress resources that is one is the uh, one is for the over, uh, external auth over two and the other one is for the over to proxy okay so the uh, so these are the things that we need to set up our Kubernetes dashboard uh, or the Kubernetes cluster and make our Kubernetes dashboard authenticate with the Keyclock OID6 authentication provider. So let me now tail the logs for the OAuth 2 proxy service. So this is always a good way uh, to make sure that you are checking your logs while we authenticate uh, uh, to the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, let me clear my screen. So you can see the auto proxy is configured with the open ID correct uh, client ID gatekeeper and these are some of the settings that we have passed as a part of parameter. Okay. And in another uh, shell, 
Uh, let us take the logs for the ingress controller kubectl get uh, pods minus a let me check the pod name for the ingress controller okay sorry i am not on my master server here so let me log into my master server kubectl get pods minus a so from here like we can get our ingress controller power name so let me clear my screen okay. I need to pass my main space Okay, uh, sorry, uh, this is in the namespace ingress nginx. Okay, so now I can see like I have the over2 proxy pod uh, logs tail and the ingress controller pod logs tail. Let us now go into our uh, browser and try to access the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, so one thing I forgot to tell you okay so let me open my another shell and get into my master server middleware stack okay but let us go to So here, uh, if you see my dashboard in this and uh, again, okay. So here, I'm trying to access uh, my ingress with the valid FQDM that is in my case is the node, the worker node, FZ cube node. But uh, if you have a, a valid uh, ingress control, uh, like uh, ingress controller installed with a load balancer, external IP assigned and a valid FQDN is assigned to that uh, load balancer you can use uh, that FQDN also in this place but in my case as I am not having a DNS resolvable FQDN I am using the Fed cube node uh, as a valid FQDN uh, to access my Kubernetes dashboard okay and one more change uh, that we need to do is because I am not having a, a valid FQDN and I am accessing my Kubernetes uh, dashboard using a uh, uh, fed uh, like cube node uh, uh, like worker node FDN. I'm using uh, basically uh, this port to actually uh, get uh, the HTTP uh, request HTTPS uh, access from the ingress controller. Okay, so let me try to explain it. Cube CTL here. Yeah services so I'm just uh, listing out all my services and you can see with the ingress resource that we deploy we get a uh, service of type load uh, this ingress controller resource service of type load balancer but in my case like I do not have a, a load balancer uh, extra load balancer configured so I'm going to use the following IP 31859 to access the HTTPS uh, as, uh, as, uh, HTTPS service of the ingress controller this is basically a node port okay but if you have the external IP assigned uh, there is no need to uh, use the node port you can uh, straight away access it on 443 okay but in my case like I do not have a uh, uh, valid FQDN uh, uh, for the external IP, so I am using the uh, FDN of the uh, worker node with the port of the node with the node port. Okay, so that is how I am going to access my Kubernetes dashboard. So let me try to access my Kubernetes dashboard over here. Fred cube node colon. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, port 31859 okay. 
so now uh, as soon as i hit it uh, you can see like it has routed the request to the identity provider in our case it is key clock so we are going to authenticate over here here we are going to authenticate with the user alice that we have configured for this application okay so yeah, now you can see like we are able to authenticate with key clock uh, OIDC provider and uh, we can get into the dashboard okay so here you can see like I'm able to access the deployments pods jobs and uh, yeah in this resources are not accessible because I didn't apply that RBAC rule okay, you can see the endpoint uh, Alice uh, the user Alice cannot list resources and ingress in the API group in the namespace default because we haven't applied that uh, RBAC rule for this user but we can check some other things like events nodes okay so one more thing I wanted to uh, tell you is the ink uh, the RBAC rule that I have applied okay RBAC rule yeah so this is the RBAC rule that we have applied so as you can see like we have provided the following res uh, resources access okay uh, which are a part of this API groups and these are the actions that we can perform on these resources okay so so that is all uh, that I wanted to show you uh, in this video so basically the intention was to show you how we can configure our Kubernetes cluster uh, with the key clock OIDC provider details in such a way without touching our Kubernetes dashboard application like how we can authenticate our Kubernetes dashboard with key clock OIDC provider and uh, get access to our cluster resources okay so I hope you uh, yeah so these are some of the documentation that you can uh, refer uh, for nginx ingress and over to proxy okay and this is my website uh, you can where you can follow so for some uh, other countries related to the middleware technologies and uh, devops tools and this is my channel uh, wherein i am posting my videos uh, corresponding to my blogs okay yes uh, that is all for today's video uh, i hope you enjoyed uh, watching this thank you all thanks for watching this video and you guys have a great day